Welcome to the Zach's Roundtable Review, a discussion of current events affecting investors as well as other topics of financial interest featuring the analysts and editors of Zach's.com. Another strong Monday opening on Euro optimism. Could it be that Italy has a plan to uh, implement austerity and save $30 billion? I don't think so. We've got the EU <laughs> summit coming up this week. That's going to be a big topic. Geithner's going over there to uh, kick some butt, and we'll see what happens. But we're not going to talk about Europe in this first segment. We're going to talk about M&A. Success Factors is going to be bought by SAP. Stock went out at 26 bucks on Friday, opened at 39 this morning on SAP's $40 bid. And S, uh, M&A this year is approaching a trillion. It's going to trounce last year by maybe $100 billion. And some of these takeout deals are just amazing. Look at uh, BHP paid a 65% premium for Petrohawk this summer. Kinder Morgan's buying El Paso, which is the second biggest deal of the year at over $21 billion. And I wrote two weeks ago about uh, Gilead buying Pharmacet for an 80% premium. Stock went out at 73 on a Friday, opens at 135 on Monday. All right. Guys, let's talk about the trends here. Steve, I, you're a value guy. I'm wondering, when you put your valuations on companies, does the, the what I call the takeout value enter into your model at all? I mean, not so much for me. You know, I mean, as a value guy, we're always trying to figure out what is this company worth? And, and I guess for some, you know, for some other potential acquirers, that might be an interesting way of taking a look at it. But really, you know, trying to guess which is the next company to be bought out. You and I talked about it before we started filming. That's just a fool's errand. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that's that's too hard. But you know, the value guy, we're always trying to find a company that's uh, trading for less than it's worth. I'm sure a lot of their competitors are doing the same thing and trying to say, "Hey, I can acquire this much market share uh, for a lot less than it would take me to build that." And uh, in this slower growth environment that right. you know, I think we're we're seeping into, M and A is not a bad way of getting that additional profit uh, on their on their. Brokers. Right. So if you're finding value, company yeah. way underpriced, right. you're going to hit some of those. Yeah, some and, of those takeout deals. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, here, but if, you, if you're trying to target that, that's that's just a waste of time. But yeah, uh, if you if you're, you're trying to get 25 plus percent value in the stock, you know, that's kind of the advantage that the value guy wants. Sometimes we're right, sometimes we're wrong. But but you know that that uh, stock trading under value it just gives us a little more upside. All right, Kev, I know that you've actually hit a couple of these. Wasn't it uh, Audible and Amazon? Yeah, I saw, I was predicting that Amazon would buy Audible, so I looked like a genius when it finally happened. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, the, what's interesting is that companies are just awash in cash. Yeah. So all of this M&A activity makes a lot of sense, uh, and I think that is a great precursor to a lot of economic growth that you're going to see down the road. Okay. Shiraz, I want to come at M&A from a different angle, this, where, mm-hmm. where you're taking and splitting up a company. Uh, on Wall Street, I think they're calling it shrinking to growth. Mm-hmm. And we've seen this happen in Abbott recently. Uh, Sarah Lee and Kraft are doing it. McGraw and, uh, and McGraw-Hill. That's right. That's the that's the new trend on Wall Street now. For for a very long time, uh, Wall Street, the M and A bankers were advising companies to bulk up, to grow horizontally, right. vertically, uh, and the, and the new mantra is to uh, to have greater shareholder focus, to have greater efficiencies, uh, and supposedly they do create returns in the long run. I personally like this trend better than the previous bulking Why? up trend. Uh, I think the, there is some value to having senior management team focused on a specific product line, right. a specific service line. Uh, so if, uh, uh, for example, um, uh, Abbott or uh, uh, El Paso or all these companies uh, split into focused companies, uh, that, that's better uh, in terms of efficiency. So it's not a time. gimmick is what you're saying. You're, no, you're no. actually unleashing real value. These are multi-year trends. On the street, the trend now is towards greater focus and and uh, and splitting the companies up. I think this trend in the long run will be more shareholder friendly than the previous one. Steve, final word. It's a, it's a little bit of a gimmick. Okay, it, it can okay. be a little bit of a gimmick. You know, if inside a boring Abbott kind of company, which is going to get you know low PE, low growth, you know, no no excitement there, if they can yeah. unlock some part of the company that that the market be willing to pay a higher PE that's for, right. that's that's kind of the gimmick gimmicky part of what they're doing, which is not bad for the guy who is owning the stock beforehand. Okay, I'm not, I'm not saying that's a problem. I'm just saying, but they are doing it to try and unlock that value. Oh, they're willing to pay a higher PE for that part of the company. Cap, 10 seconds. I'm just going to say, you can get a competitive advantage, and with the companies with all this cash, you can either buy your shares back, which never really turns out good, or you can buy a strategic uh, company. That's what they're doing. we got to go back with 30-day predictions with the guys. <laughs> 